1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. This is your turn. A live call in show featuring spirited discussion and debate about issues that matter to the community. Stay with us to hear what Northwest Florida thinks. Better yet, call in at 623 1330 and tell us what you think. It's your turn here on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. Now, here's the host of Your Turn. All right. Well, that one's not going to work. <laughs> well, folks, listen, welcome to Freedom Friday. We'll get that drum roll going again in a moment, but we're just going to bust in right now and welcome you to the show today. I'm so glad that you're listening to us. And of course, we're broadcasting live this afternoon, 1330 WEBY, right out of Northwest Florida. And we're broadcasting to four states along the Gulf Coast. And of course, we're broadcasting over the internet. If you want to be a part of the show, uh, you know, when you uh, are away from the black box called the radio, uh, just go to Carl Gallup. Dot com up in the top right hand corner click the listen live link and it'll carry you and or to weby uh, 1330 weby.com listen live link those two places you can get a hold of us live on the internet plus you can uh, stream us over your smartphone on tune in radio app and uh, you can take us with us take us with you wherever you go all right well Again, we've got a two-hour show today. Brandon Big B's in the studio with me today. Mallory Bardwell, your world-famous producer, and uh, she'll be taking your calls and lining you up in the queue. We're going to be taking your calls during the entire show today so that you can jump in on what we're talking about. We've got some top stories, some breaking stories, some interesting uh, comments and investigation and opining on these stories, and so you can jump in and be a part of that. Plus, of course, uh, last week, you know, we had a hot show and uh, several guests weighing in, including my Mike Zulo and uh, Mike Shoesmith and Dr. Grace. So if you want to comment on some of those things that you heard last week and or ask questions, feel free to call. Now, most of you know the number, but I'm going to say it again because we pick up new listeners every week and we appreciate that. 623-1330 is the number. The area code is 850-850-623-1330. So if you want to be a part of the show today, you just call in, talk to Mallory, get in the queue, and if you'll be patient and hang on, we will get you on the air and you can be heard by a national and international audience. We podcast this show. Go to carlgallops.com tomorrow afternoon, about noontime from there on, and you can uh, download the podcast. So uh, that's what you do. In the meantime, i got to say happy Valentine's Day to folks out there. Oh, I I see guys riding down the road right now, Brandon, slapping their heads. (laughs) Uh, I think a few guys just ran off the road. I know. know. And by the way, (laughs) welcome to the show today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know you've got some hot stuff to talk about, and I can't wait to dive into it with you. Uh, but it is Valentine's Day, guys. We're not lying to you. It is. I'm, I'm a hero today. I'm all covered. I, I, I got my precious Valentine, some beautiful flowers, and uh, had them delivered to her and uh, was able to be there at that instant, which is very, very unusual for me to be able to be there when the flowers are delivered. But I was today and saw this wonderful smile come across her face and, you know, happy Valentine's Day. So, uh uh, it, it, listen, it, it, in case you forgot, you still have time. Those of you in the Northwest Florida area, I want to encourage you. I want to urge you to get your flowers where I got my flowers and where I purchase my flowers every time I get flowers for any occasion. And that's the Purple Tulip Florist right here in Milton, Florida. And uh, yeah, you, you've got to use the Purple Tulip. They're awesome folks. And by the way, uh, they're still open this afternoon. They can still take your Valentine's order. They can still get it out. But you got to do that quickly. The phone number is 983-3600, 983-3600, area code 850, of course, 983-3600. That's easy to remember. And of course, you can visit their website, purpletulipflorist.com, purpletulipflorist.com. Now, they're located right across the street from Milton High School on Stewart Street, and uh, they deliver throughout all of Escambia and Santa Rosa counties right here in Northwest Florida. So you can get her done today, just in case you forgot and you'll be thanking me for reminding you and the purple tulip florist they are huge sponsors of weby and help to keep freedom friday on the air so we appreciate and love them and as i said that has that's where i've been doing business for years even before they were advertising with us i was doing business with the purple tulip florist they're great folks they get it right every time 983-3600 983-3600 all right listen uh, brandon i uh I'm not going to ask you if you uh, got your Valentine. 
<laughs> Man, put me on the spot, bro. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to do that. <laughs> well, listen, we've got so many things to talk about. Uh, bef- before we get into all of these things, I, I-, I want to go to the issue uh, of of what's going on with my book right now. Yeah. Because there there are some big things happening, folks. I, I know a lot of you have been listening for a while, and you've been keeping up with uh, uh, with with the latest book that I wrote entitled The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, the story of Yitzhak Kaduri. Now, now I'm not going to go through that whole thing. The book is 250 pages, I think, so uh, it's it's quite a story. Uh, but, but the book was made into a movie, made into a documentary movie, by the way, by George Escobar. And George Escobar is the producer of the movie called Alone But Not Alone, which was uh, the music in it was up for an Academy Award, and that got pulled because of some controversy over the guy that wrote the music, who supposedly was kind of, uh, uh, what, what were they saying? He was kind of uh, politicking the judges. But then we found out after all that hoopla, after it made headline news, we found out that what he did, he wasn't politicking the judges. He simply was saying, look, I want you to make sure that you know that we've got a song in a brand new movie coming out. Take a look at it. Listen to it. And that not only is not against the rules, but producers of music and producers of movies do that all the time. That's how the Academy of War judges know about stuff. They just tell them. They just said, look. So anyway, but they disqualified them. And even secular artists were up in arms about it. Even people who <laughs> otherwise would never defend anything Christian were going berserk, and, and they were being quoted in headline news and mainstream news media as being very, very upset that these, uh, that these Christians were done that way. And a lot of people were saying it looked as though uh, there was some real prejudice towards a Christian movie and the Christian music. Do you remember all of that? I, I, I do a- remember that, but... Um, if you think that Christians are, discriminate, are discriminated against in today's world, you're just a racist. I'm I know. sorry. I, I'm a racist. I'm leaving. I, I guess I am. <laughs> just get up and leave. You know, you're in the presence of a racist, I Take guess. Take a racist tinfoil hat <laughs> off. I know. I'm a tinfoil hat wearing <laughs> racist because I think that. Well, anyway, back to the topic at hand. I was just trying to tell you, this is the same guy that produced my movie, George Escobar. He is an award-winning film producer. Uh, the number one faith movie in America for two years running, uh, Isaiah 910 judgment. Uh, He produced that movie. So he produced my movie, the same title as my book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. The book and the movie going crazy. It's the book is in its second printing, Brandon, and it's only been out right as of now. It's been out three months. It was officially released three months ago. It's already the first run edition is completely sold out. You can't get them anywhere. The second edition is now on the shelves. You can get it everywhere. And uh, the DVD, of course, is still out there going crazy. But what's really exciting to me, folks, is that the book and the movie, box loads of them, have made it to Israel. Now, I've got some supernatural stuff to tell you, folks, before we move on to these other stories. And by the way, we've got the whole two hours today. Brandon and I, we're here. We've got tons of stuff to share with you. If you want to be a part of this, 623-1330, area code 850, feel free and call in. And, uh, but, Brandon, here's what's happened. The book and the movie have made it to Israel. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell the, the listeners the quick story behind that because that is absolutely supernatural how that happened. Not only that, but the book and the movie have made it to the Israeli Bible Society, and they are working with publishers and copyright laws trying to get at least the movie dubbed into Hebrew and perhaps the book translated into Hebrew because there is an outcry among the people over there. They want it. They want to read about it. They, they know about it. They know what the book is about. They know the topic. Uh, they know where it goes. Uh, they know the movie, but they want to be able to share it with people all over Israel. And most of the people in Israel can speak English. I was told by a missionary there who's, who's, who was born and raised in Israel, who is, uh, speaks uh, Hebrew as his first language, he told me, he says, most of the Israelis can speak English, but many of them have a hard time reading it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like me. I speak conversational Spanish right. all day long. I've gone down to Peru back and forth by myself, stayed eight or nine, ten days, spoke nothing but Spanish the whole time I was there. So I can speak it very well conversationally, but I can hardly read a lick of it. I mean, I learn. Every time I go, I pick up Spanish literature. I'm looking on the street signs and asking, what does that mean? And, and you know, it's different from being, well, it's like a four-year-old child can speak eloquently, but right. they can't read for another two or three years. So same thing. The Hebrew people can speak English, many of them, very well, but they 
cannot read it at the level at which my book was written. And uh, so anyway, just pray about that, folks, because if we can get the DVD translated or excuse me, uh, dubbed um, uh, with subtitles, if you will. Is that did I say that right? Subtitles. Is that right? No, that's right. Okay, in English and then the book translated into Hebrew. I mean. Subtitled into Hebrew in the book translation. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, but listen, folks, it, it's even better than that. So, on top of all of that, if you've seen the movie, and I know many of you have, or if you've read the book, uh, there's a guy that appears in the book and in the movie. His name is Zev, Z E V, Porat, P O R A T. Now, for those of you that have seen the movie, you'll remember him. He's kind of a ball headed guy, a uh, big, big, stocky guy. Looks like he's probably in his mid to late 30s. He is sitting at a table, a picnic table, and he's ministering to, translating f- uh, some of Kaduri's students who have come to faith in Jesus Christ as a result of Kaduri's teaching in his rabbinical training school. Now, this is before Kaduri died. And they're in the movie, and, and that's to prove that Kaduri was teaching, even before he released this, this cryptic mystery note, uh, that he was teaching that the name of Messiah is Jesus, which is just unthinkable for an Orthodox rabbi to do that. Not only that, but the most venerated, the most famous rabbi in modern Israel's history. 350,000 people came to his funeral, closed the streets of Jerusalem down. The president of Israel delivered the eulogy. I mean, this guy, he wasn't some little obscure rabbi tucked away in the bowels of Jerusalem. This guy was famous. And, and his students... Now, Zev Parat told me on the phone the other day that now 10 of them have, have come to faith in Jesus Christ as a result of Kaduri's teachings. Wow. So now they've got their hands on the book and the movie, and Zev Parat showed my movie to Kaduri students, and they're going crazy over it. So, so am, I, am I just crazy, or am I maybe understanding that once again, we're seeing Bible prophecy come true come, in our I'm lifetime you. that started in Deuteronomy before yeah. Israel was ever a nation. Before they were ever a nation, yeah. And continued throughout the prophets of the Old Testament. Right. And then Jesus declaring it himself in the New Testament that in the last days right. that the Jews would come back to yeah. And they would uh, hear and they God, would respond. That they would be, have a longing for him, for the right. true Yahweh. Right. Yeah. And they would hear and they would respond. Not only that, but there's prophecies in Joel, uh, repeated again in the book of Acts, that says, and your young men will dream dreams, and your old men will have visions, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And by the way, the moon will turn to blood red. And that and, might happen in the next well, couple of well, years. Well, we've got blood moons coming this year <laughs> and next year. By the way, folks, if you want to jump in and ask questions about this, you want to ask questions about the blood moon phenomena, I'm prepared to answer that. If you want to talk about this Kaduri phenomena, Phenomena. We're prepared to talk and answer to that. Plus, we've got tons of top stories Brandon and I are getting ready to get into. So you can be a part of all this today if you'd like. Or get you a cup of coffee, glass of tea, whatever, Coca-Cola, sit back and listen and just enjoy. But Brandon, i got to tell you this. I want to tell the audience too. The supernatural element to all of this. I mean, what I've just said is astounding. And, and I'm just, I'm humbled by this. I praise God that he would use me and my, and my little book and now the movie to, maybe to be a part of some end-time prophetic fulfillments is just overwhelming to me. It's surreal to me. Sometimes I have to pinch myself to, to realize that this is actually happening and not just some dream. But here's how it began, Brandon. And, and, and Audience, listen to this now. This is, well, actually, I'm going to leave you hanging there because I just look, it's time for our first break. We're going to take a two minute break. When we come back, I'm going to give you this God story, this supernatural uh, connections that happened out of the clear blue to take the books and the movies to Israel, now into the hands of that guy that was interviewed in my movie and now into uh, Kaduri students themselves and in and around Israel. It is absolutely astounding. As soon as we come back, I'll tell you that. And then uh, Brandon and I are going to dive into some really cool stuff. You're listening Freedom Friday, Carl Gallops. Brandon Big B is with me today. We'll be right back. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Welcome back to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Sit down, buckle up, and hang on. 
All right, welcome back. America, Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops and Brandon Bigby is in here with me today. Well, listen, I left you guys hanging. I, I've got to tell you this God story about the book and tie all these loose ends together, and then we're going to move on. Uh, but again, if you have questions about it or the phenomena or, or if you've read the book and have questions or if you've seen the movie and have questions or comments or opinions, please feel free. Even if you disagree where, you know, where maybe some of the opinions went in the book, uh, f- f- feel free to call in and talk to us about it. But, but let me just tell you this. Brandon, here's what happened. So several weeks ago, um, I, I'm going about my business. You get ready for radio programs. Of course, I pastor a church, and I'm dealing with all that and ministry and counseling and writing messages and researching. And I'm, oops, somebody's cell phone's going off here. And I'm writing and I'm writing books and you know just staying busy. And I my my email box just blows up every day with people that have read the book or seen the movie and want to contact me about this or that. A lot of them are interviews, TV and radio, and I appreciate that. So I, I got this interview. I mean, excuse me, this email that came through the church office. And I'm not going to say these people's last name over the radio right now. I don't think they would mind, but I have not asked permission, so I'm not going to do it. But I can tell you everything else about it. But they went through the church office. They tracked me down and said, have Carl call us. Now, this is a couple of weeks ago. said, we're in Key West. We've read the book, and we must speak to him. Okay. Well, you know, Brandon, I can get tons of requests like that and I, it, I can't answer them all personally and on the phone for an hour or two with each person so I didn't really know how I needed to respond to that but something kept telling me call these people call these people so I called them thinking well boy I could you know this could go bad <laughs> because I didn't know maybe they hated the book maybe they wanted to cuss me out for two hours I didn't know so I called them and the guy said let me tell you what's happened he said we're from way up north of in the United States, I'm, right now I'm not going to say the state, but way, way up north, he said we're taking vacation in Key West, so they're at the from the furthest north to the furthest south they're going, and they said on the way down we stopped in a Lifeway bookstore in Sarasota. He said my wife walked in, I was getting gas across the street. My wife walks in the store, and the first book she sees is this book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. He said she freaked out. He said I'm going to tell you why in a minute, but she freaked out. She saw it. She snatched it up. She started looking through it. She said, oh, my gosh, this story is being opened up again. I can't believe it. So she picks up the book. She gets in the car, tells her husband, you're not going to believe what I found in the bookstore. Look, he looks at it. He freaks out. He said, we took it down to Key West. We read it from cover to cover. He said, we were blown away. It was as though it was as though you were there. And he said, we wanted to know who, who you were. So he calls me up and he says, we're in Key West. Where are you? And I said, well, I'm in Pensacola. He said, we're coming to see you. I said, brother, that's a 16-hour drive. <laughs> I said, you do know where Pensacola is, don't you? That's not near Miami. He said, no, we know where Pensacola is. He said, we're coming to you. We, we've got to meet you. And he said, here's why. He said, I lived in Israel for eight years. I lived there. I worked there. He said, I know people. He said, let me tell you how, how connected I am. He said, and I forgot the year. I think it was 2004, 2005. He said, I was invited as the only Gentile Christian in the history of Israel to be invited, invited to speak before the Sanhedrin Council in Jerusalem. He said, and they told me again when I arrived that I was the first Gentile Christian ever to be asked to speak before them, to represent the ideas of Christianity. He said, that's how tied in I am to the Messianic Jewish community, the Christian community, and the Jewish community, and kind of a liaison between them all. And he said, I have connections to the Israeli Bible Society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said, we know about this story. He said, what you've written is true. He said, this happened, and, and, and it's happened the way you've written it. And he said, we had no idea. He said, the Israeli media shut the story down. We had no idea there was a book, and, and, and now you're telling us a movie. And, of course, they ordered the movie and finally watched it and went crazy, and they're taking the movie everywhere. But uh, he said, we, we have got to get with you and your publishers. We're, he said, I'm going to make a trip to Israel, and we're going to take these books and movies into Israel. And that's how that opened up. Well, when they got there with all the stuff, the, 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 the outpouring of, of uh, interest was so huge that then they asked me about Zev Parat, who's the guy doing the interviewing. They said, how do we get a hold of him? I said, I don't know. I don't know the man. I've never met the man. I said, I just knew that he had these videos out there, and I knew he was involved as an evangelist among his own people. See, Zev Parat, Brandon, was born and raised Israeli, spoke Hebrew from a from his first language. His grandfather was a famous rabbi in and of himself and was friends with Kaduri. 
So that's how he has his inside connections. By the way, folks, Zef Peratt's going to be on Freedom Friday next Friday. Wow. He's going to be calling out of Israel. It'll be 1 o'clock in the morning when he calls over there. But he's going to be on this show next Friday, folks. And so Zef Peratt, finally, they found him. These people from up north, they tracked him down, gave him the book and the movie. He went ballistic over it, absolutely berserk, I mean in a good way. Couldn't believe that the story had been reopened because he's been using it to minister to Jews ever since 2006 when Kaduri died. He took my movie, showed it to the students. He sent me a picture the other day where he's sitting in a, in a cafe in downtown Jerusalem. He's got my book on the table, witnessing to Jews. He told me that he was in a train was reading my book on a train, on a long train ride. He said before the train ride was over, he had a dozen Hebrews around him asking him. They noticed the picture. They saw the front cover. They knew who it was. Yeah. And he was witnessing to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though my book's not preachy, it just reports the story. But he's witnessing to these Jews using the words of their own rabbi. And see, they didn't know the story, Brandon, because the media shut it down. Right. Right. See, but my book has opened it. The movie has opened it. It's going all over Israel. Now, I got to tell you this. I haven't even told you this, Brandon. This is going to put chill bumps on your arms. So Zev Perret calls me. He says, Carl, in the beginning, you write a story about the synagogue service on Yom Kippur when Kaduri reveals these things. He said, were you there? And I thought it was kind of accusatory, like, you know, you weren't there. How do you know this stuff? And you didn't tell the truth or you didn't get this right. And so I explained to him, I said, no, I wasn't there. I said, but I researched it from these various sources, et cetera, et cetera. And he kind of heard me being a little defensive, I think. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, I'm not saying that you got anything wrong. He said, the reason I asked if you were there is because he said, I know people who were, and I was, on the fringes of that. And he said, what you wrote in this book, it is as though you were there. Wow. He said, it is exactly what happened. And I said, well, I just kind of wrote it fictionally using facts that I had researched. He said, no, no, there's nothing fiction about this. He said, it's as though you were there. You see how anointed that was? Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, folks, listen, we, that's enough of that. I've used this whole first segment to talk about it, and we've got to take a break and come back. And from there on, we're just going to talk about other stuff, unless you want to talk about this. But, folks, I'm telling you, if you don't have this book, get it. Go to Amazon, anywhere, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. Get the movie. It's amazing. Show it to your church. It's being shown to churches all over the nation. You've got to see this. It will blow you away. Well, you're listening to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. When we come back, we're going to take some stuff right out of the headlines and or stuff that should be in the headlines but it's not, and we'll be uh, commenting upon it and tearing it apart. You can be a part of the show. Brandon Big B's in the studio with me. We'll be right back after this brief time out Freedom Friday. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Why are you here? To get some money. What kind of money? Obama money. Where's it coming from? Obama. And where did Obama get it? I don't know, his stash. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where he got it from. But he's giving it to us to help no, us. We love him. That's we why we voted him. for him. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was the most memorable time of my life. I, I, it was a touching moment. Because I never thought this day would ever happen. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, if I, if I help him, he's going to help me. This message has been brought to you by the official Government Hope and Change Commission. <laughs> All right. I just, but I, that never grows old to me. I just enjoy listening to that. And I, I don't know. I, you know, I heard somewhere, Brandon, do you have any information on this? That, that last woman that was speaking, I think she has since kind of recanted it's or the something. The first one. The first the, one. She's known as the Obama phone lady. Okay. And I'm going to tell you how it happened. I okay. heard it happen actually live. Okay. Uh, InfoWars crew went and found, found this lady, her. Yeah. brought her in the studio in Austin, Texas. Wow. And Alex Jones went on air with her uh -huh. and laid out fact after fact after fact and converted her on air, brother, and got her to admit she was being paid by the administration at the time. Wait, wait a minute. You mean 
other than the Obama phone, they actually put money in her hand. Somebody did. She was being actually paid to, to say represent those kinds of things. The administration. Oh my! Gosh. And you know what I was thinking when that clip came on? The yeah. second girl yeah. talking about I don't have to worry about putting gas in my car yeah. or paying my mortgage. Yeah, she was kind of right. Yeah, not because Obama gave her everything, because pretty soon. You ain't going to be able to afford that's to right. put gas in your car and pay your, <laughs> or mortgage. Pay your mortgage. You might not be able to now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Don't have to worry about you it. Let them keep wrecking, the, wrecking this country right. and wrecking the economy. Right. And she's right. Well, speaking of wrecking the economy, I saw a headline news or, or a news uh, item today uh, making its way around Internet news about the e EU. Yeah. Uh, talking about confiscating personal savings. Now, this is another thing that we could add to that P.P. Simmons article several weeks ago about things that us tinfoil hats yeah. are, are but, going to be right on. Right. There been was talking a whole about list for, of things that we were have already right. been right on. Right. This is one that we will be right on. It happened. Cyprus was a test run. Right. You got a little island a sitting over there that, that yeah. people don't even know where it is, most people. Right. Um and it was very wealthy at one time, right. a, a tourist place, beautiful place. goes all the way back to biblical times and before. All the way back before. to biblical yeah. times. Just understand, people, that they, conf they went into people's bank accounts. Retirement accounts, savings accounts. Savings accounts, bank accounts, retirement accounts. And took Because the they thought they had too, because the government thought they had too much money and took the money to pay government debt. Right. The government determined that these people had, quote, too much money and the government needs it. So exactly they just took right. it. Reuters has a story today. Same headlines, basically. The EU, the, uh, Reuters has gotten a hold of some leaked documents right. where the EU is admitting internally that they're planning to do that this year. So Cyprus was a test run, and the Cyprus EU was watching was a it test closely. Run. If it happens in the EU, just understand we are next. Canada last year in some of their uh, in some of their government meetings, I don't know, Congress, their equivalent to our Congress, right said openly that that was a part of their 2014 budget. <laughs> oh, my gosh, to confiscate funds? Yes. Well, and I want to say this, and I want, listen, I know people listen to radio going down the road, and they're, you know, they're looking at their cell phone and kind of half listening sometimes, sometimes. Uh, so, so please hear me. And I appreciate that. Appreciate us being in the background. So be careful that you don't misunderstand or misquote what I'm going to say. But I did see an article a couple of weeks ago uh, and, and, and officials within the government, I don't remember who, were discussing the possibilities of doing that in the United States. Yes. Now, please hear me, folks. I'm not saying, we are not announcing that in, in any official way that the government of the United States is going to confiscate your funds. I'm just talking about it happened in Cyprus. Now the headline news, they're, they're, they're considering it very seriously in EU. You just mentioned in Canada. The, that possibility put into their budget, and that was, and that can be documented. And I'm telling you, I have read where discussions are going on in the United States about that possibility here. Yes. It, well, not only that, but uh, just in the last couple of days, Obama gave a speech interview, and he, I mean, he, he almost said that. Um, you know, he, he's he's pushing these these government controlled uh, uh, retirement accounts now, right. basically. Uh, you know, give all your money to the government for your retirement, and we'll take good care of oh, it. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Because they sure always it's have, all there. Because they always because have. Because they always have. Because yeah. they've done everything they said they would ever yes. do. They've never lied. Like the Social, never Security, stolen. Social Security lock box. Exactly. Yeah, there's not a box. So there's not a lock. It would just be <laughs> a new government Ponzi scheme is right. all this will be. Right. So j j just understand. I, I mean, this isn't to scare people. It's not to alarm people. But just Wake up and think. Look what a little snowstorm has done in the outrage that it's caused, and people going crazy. They're yeah. they're you know emptying yeah. grocery uh, store shelves. Right. Same thing with a hurricane here. People go nuts. They buy up all the gas. God. What if life was just going to be like that? Right. What, what if, if it, what if we had a 1929 all over again? Right. It, and you woke and it up can to, you woke up tomorrow, and that's just how life is. I used that example back uh, right after Thanksgiving in the Black Friday shopping. Right. I mean, we see people. Beating each other, stabbing each other, guns being pulled over over, over toys, a little junk, uh, the junk. latest electronic device that'll junk. be obsolete in two weeks. Yeah, that you're putting on a credit card because you don't have the money in your pocket to pay yeah. for it anyway. And you're gonna be paying for it long after it's obsolete. That's exactly right. And but that's just a little glimpse of right. what things would be like. Right. If the grocery stores didn't have food right. tomorrow, right, or the next day, or the next day, right. or if you didn't have electricity in your house, right. We we we've got right now. The culture 
that the rest of the world wants to emulate and or come to, even if they have to do it illegally and risk their lives. We have the grand, greatest economy, the greatest nation, the greatest freedoms, although they're being ripped from us every day, anywhere in the world. However, as Brandon just demonstrated, do you see how fragile it is? Yes. Well, It is so fragile. And it's very interesting because uh, just this last week, there were several articles around the Internet that pointed out that United States citizens that were that uh, were revoking their citizenship right. is up over 200% in Record the last number. 12 months. Right. Listen, you and I know a guy uh, that, was, that served this country mm -hmm. deeply, mm -hmm. uh, P.P. Simmons contributor, yeah, that picked up and about. left. Yep. Yeah, as a matter of fact, his last writing that he did on P.P. Simmons was him saying goodbye. Right. This man served his country, uh, you know, deeply, deeply, yeah. deeply, yeah. and uh, was a very valuable source of information to us. And mm -hmm. he got so freaked out by what's going on, he picked up and left. Right. And because he has inside scoop. Because he knows what's going on. Right. He helped train some of the people that are pulling the strings now. Well, not only that, you remember this particular guy helped to train the LAX well, not no, not the LAX, LAPD SWAT. the LAPD SWAT team. Yeah, in handling LAX terrorism scenarios, he yeah. helped to train them. And this guy is a friend of mine and yours, That's and right. he's been on PP Simmons contributor. And when the whole LAX TSA thing went down here six months ago, folks, do you remember that? You hadn't yeah. forgotten that, have you? Yeah. Where this TSA agent comes in and shoots up a bunch of other agents, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then what did, they, what did we say was going to happen right after that? That they were going to move the barriers of the TSA further and further out. And surely enough, just a few days later, that was being proposed. There was a call to arm them within less than 72 hours. Right. Now, I haven't seen that happen. Right. But. But Within less than 72 hours, there was a call to arm the, arm TSA. the TSA agents. And now we see random searches of vehicles parked in right. long-term parking. Illegal right. searches. Illegal searches. We see Unconstitutional. We are now seeing detention pods right. at the entrances and exits of the airports where literally you have to go through a glass detention pod right. at the exits of some major airports. This will be in Pensacola right. within just the next couple of years, I'm sure. Right. So, yeah, it, well, it's it, it's unbelievable, the expansion and the corruption. And do you remember that this gentleman we're talking about told us when all of that was going down on the news, he knew nothing about nothing. He was just watching the news like everybody else. He called up his high-ranking contact within the LAPD, whom he was affiliated with in the training of the LAPD on such scenarios. He calls him up and he says to him, and I'm just going to use the word John, I'm the name John, that's not his name. He said, John, what's going on down there? And the guy said, I'm in the office, I need to get to a hard line. Yeah. He said, let me call you back. And in a few moments, he called back our guy and he said, it's a setup. It's a, a false, false flag. flag. The word he, he said, used. it's a false flag. We knew this was happening. That's all I can tell you. It's a false flag and hung the phone up. This yeah. is a high-ranking official in the LAPD that called our high-ranking military yeah. source who helped train the LAPD. And this is the guy that said, I'm getting rid of my citizenship. I'm leaving yep. the country because he knows what's going on. That's right. But see, we're tinfoil hats if we talk about this. Yeah. See, we're nut jobs. Yeah. See. But you got a guy who helped train the LAPD who gets a phone call from a high-ranking official in the LAPD saying what happened at LAX is a false flag. It's all a big scam. It's a setup. It's a ruse. And let's just, let's just look at the facts. Yeah. The facts certainly point to just that. Yeah. To just that. The facts If do. you'll remember the day it happened, I wasn't supposed to be on the show. I heard late that afternoon that it happened. I literally pulled over my truck and called you and said, I've got to come on because I've got all these articles from six months ago where they were training for this exact scenario. And it, it happened almost to the T. Just like this. And, and that evening, the LAPD police chief. Admitted on air. Yep. Goes on the air, and he admits it, but it was a faux pas. It was a slip of the yep. tongue. In fact, we've got a video of his high-ranking officials standing around him. When he admitted it, they're slapping their heads. Hanging their heads. Hanging behind. their yep. heads and slapping their foreheads because they knew he just yep. spilled the beans. What did he say? He said, yes, he said, we've been training for this exact, exact scenario, scenario. Yeah. for the last couple of weeks. We've been training for this exact scenario. He said that yeah. over the air. Well, and not only that, if you'll remember, just in the last three or four weeks, uh, there were some, some articles that came out after uh, some different Freedom of, of Information Act requests were granted that... 
there were two armed uh, security officers that were supposed to be on detail in that area. Right. Both of them were on, quote, break or a restroom break. Right. Without permission, without permission. from their superior. They just disappeared. Accidentally disappeared. At the exact now, instant that this guy comes in. I would go so with... far to say that yeah. they had permission. Yeah. <laughs> Just not from the, it, their yeah. superior. A lot of people speculate that, and that's some pretty heavy duty. That's some heavy duty speculation based upon some uh, some pretty good information <laughs> and facts. I'm telling you, I don't even know how we got off on that. But you, but, but yeah. you see, but see, one of the things I want to take away from this is, you see. When Brandon and I and many others, we're not the only ones. When we were looking at that thing unfold, and we were just asking logical questions. Now, remember, I come out of a law enforcement background. By the way, Brandon was trained in th went through a law enforcement training academy. He's never worked in it, but he did go through the law enforcement training academy, so he he knows how all this works as well. But I actually worked in it for ten years, and I know how to ask those kinds of questions when these things unfold. And so that's all we were doing back then. We were just asking the questions. We were listening to the facts coming out over the news, and we were scratching our heads saying, ah, God, that, that, I don't know about that. That doesn't make sense. If, if that's true, then why this? Well, if that's true, why would they do that? Why would they say this? We were just putting two and two together and, of course, being called tinfoil hats. But then within days, we get this call from this military friend of ours who, yeah. who actually helped train the LAPD who actually talked to an LAPD captain who called him from a landline and before our guy could even ask any questions, the captain saying, this is a false flag. Don't believe anything you're watching over the news. Yeah. This is, and then he used some expletives mm -hmm. and, and hung up. Now, yeah. I mean, so what we were, the questions we were asking, we were dead on. That's right. That's we right. didn't have on tin full hats. We were thinking like logical people uh, with didactic reasoning, well, like a cop. And, and, you know, another thing that's been a big clue to me over the last several years, and, and you see stories like this, when you, you have a story like this that, that you, you know, if, all the, if everything lined up and it, this was a crazy nut who was anti-government and went in there and shot the place up like they wanted it to be, right. like they made it out to be, right. this story would stay headlines for months. Right. It's gone. Right. It's gone. Yeah. Let, let me give you some other examples, okay? Um, the woman they executed in front of the that was, White House. Uh, Is Mar that where you were Mariam going? Miriam Carey. Miriam Carey. Brother, they and her executed sister Valerie. this woman in front of the White House for supposedly ramming a barricade, which she didn't do. Nope. For supposedly shooting at Capitol Police. Which she which didn't do. she didn't do. Uh, for, for supposedly fleeing at high speeds, which she didn't do. For being crazy and on medication, which, which she, she wasn't. wasn't. Uh, so... Now, where's that story? And what's gone? Oh, but they gave the guys that murdered her. Uh, they gave them big medals and Congressional medals. Uh, you yeah. know, after the congressman crawled out from under their desk. Right, hiding. yeah, yeah, hiding them. and squealing like little six-year-old girls. But, you know, think about that. Hey, let me give you the biggest one of all, brother. Yeah. Sandy Hook. Yeah. That story, if it was 100% legitimate. It would still be. If, if one crazy nut job went in there and murdered, and listen, people died. Kids died in that school, yes. and that is a shame. Right. But the facts point to that it probably didn't happen the way that we're being fed that it like happened. Like the news reported. That's exactly it. right. Yeah. If that story was legitimate, our, our, our computer screens, TV screens would still be smeared with that story to this day. But because we, the alternative media, exposed that, like the Boston Found bombing. Found out the farce, like the LAX TSA. They have to make it go away. They have to make it go away because we know it's time for break. We've got to take a break. We're going to come back with more of this in just a moment. You're listening to Freedom Friday. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Aren't you glad that you patiently waited? Carl is back. He is in the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio, and you are with him. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back, Gulf Coast. Welcome back, America. So glad that you've tuned in today, and we're broadcasting live. We've got callers on the line. If you want to be a part of the show, 623-1330, area code 850. Brandon and I are just talking about all of these um, <laughs> these events that have a very, very uh, spurious connections around the edges, and uh, and, and, and we're, we're bringing some stuff to the table. But let's go to the phone lines because we've got a guy, Jim. Thank you so much for listening today, and you want to talk about uh, what? 
Jim. Yeah. Hey, yeah. What's hey, what's on your mind, man? Thanks for listening. Yeah, uh, Byron's friend. I don't remember him, but uh, anyway, uh, you were talking about false flags. And, uh, I'll let you know that locally and in the region that a lot of uh, law enforcement is being trained in not counter-terror anymore, civil unrest, and they're getting their training from federal agencies. Yeah, it's, it's the militarization of our police forces, Jim, and right. we have actually reported on that right here, and uh, we're actually going to be getting into that a little deeper uh, in the second hour today, uh, specifically concerning some uh, National Guard activity and some uh, some police forces across the country. Yeah. There is no doubt there is an absolute militarization of our police going on. If you look at the equipment they're using, they're riding around in big armored uh, you know, Humvees like we see riding around in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, we see them dressed in all black, you know, and it, it just right. this, this crazy gear. And it, it's just, it's, they're not public servants anymore. And, they are there to keep we the slaves, not we the yeah. people. They're not there to serve we the people. They're there to keep we the slaves in control. And, and, and thank you so much, Jim. God bless you for that. And thanks for listening. And thank you for your input. And Brandon, let me tell you something. I've been given a lot of thought to this. I read an article of, about a week and a half ago that really kind of gave me I had an aha moment mm -hmm. they had a sheriff bragging about all of this hardware military hardware and he was up there I mean he was saying yeah you mess with us now and we'll bring a tank to your front doorsteps yeah. you remember that yeah I yeah. mean he literally said that but a year ago we were crazy for saying for that was saying, gonna happen that's right we used to talk about that and and now of course they're doing it and and they were talking about how the different, you know, deputies and police officers. Now, folks, listen, I used to be one. I love law enforcement. Yeah. One of my best friends in this area is the sheriff of this county. And, and like I've got a lot of law enforcement. For that, law enforcement people that are members of my church. I am pro-law enforcement. But I had an aha moment. When I saw all of that, I said, you know, I put myself back when I was a young law enforcement officer in my 20s and 30s. I put myself back during those times. And, you know, gung-ho, trained in all the latest training stuff and, and out there doing my job, looking for the bad guy, trying to protect the public. What if the next thing I knew, hey, guys, we got this opportunity to put you through these SWAT team things yeah. and this militaristic training, and we're getting this equipment in. And, I mean, you know, you look and say, man, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And that we can do our job better, and we can do this, and we can do that. Yeah, and you know there's a bunch of freaks out there now, and there's a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, kind of homegrown terrorists, and we've got to be prepared for them. You know, yeah, rah, rah, we're ready, we're ready. You know, I can understand the psychology because I used to be a cop. And I'm not saying all cops don't use their heads and they get all emotional. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a psychology. Yeah. Boiling the frog slowly. Yeah. And now our police have moved into this paramilitary mindset and you got this sheriff that was on there talking about mess with us now and we'll bring a tank to your front door. Yeah. Because he's all caught up in it. Yeah. I see how it happens. Well, you know, and not only that, and again, just, just let me just back up what you said. Not anti-law enforcement at all. I appreciate the guys that are out there that are hardworking and are there to protect you and I. Right. I, I do, you know, as Me too. in my family Me too. as much as anything. But, you know, it's unfortunate that we see, and this is mainline, just, just, just run a search engine on this, police hiring lower IQ. Right. Uh, just do some research on world history. When countries are going downhill, one of the first things that the, the, the regimes in charge do is they will take criminals, people who have come out of a criminal background and put them in places of authority, i.e. the TSA. TSA. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a exactly prime example. what yeah. I thought of, yeah. But it's happening in our police forces. Not only that, listen, you just you walk through, especially major cities. I spend a lot of time in New Orleans. You walk downtown New Orleans and you look at the police p patrolling the streets. Right. It's not an average-looking uh, guy like you and I. Man, these guys are 270, 280 pounds. Their jaw's about to poke out the front of their face. I've been around gyms all my life. Right. They didn't get that way from lifting weights. Yeah. So now you've got the drug factor coming in. Right. And it's just, you know, you've got psychos running around out there with a, a badge and a gun. And it's they're taking over. I know. I know. Well, good gracious. Folks, listen, if you want to weigh in and be a part of this this afternoon, we've got another whole hour today on Freedom Friday. And we're taking your calls. This is just open line Friday. Brandon Big B sitting in the studio with me. We'll take your call, 623-1330. Mike Shoesmith can't be with us today. 
Dr. Grace is not with us today. They'll all be back next week. But this Friday, it's for you as Brandon Big B and I sit in here and uh, talk to you. We'll be right back after this timeout. We've got another whole hour. Don't go anywhere. Thirteen thirty W E B Y Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. This is your turn. A live call-in show featuring spirited discussion and debate about issues that matter to the community. Stay with us to hear what Northwest Florida thinks. Better yet, call in at six two three thirteen thirty and tell us what you think. It's your turn here on thirteen thirty W E B Y Northwest Florida's Talk Radio. Now here's the host of Your Turn. Welcome to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. You are in the Oval Office, the White House of Gulf Coast Talk Radio, broadcasting to parts of four states along the Gulf Coast and broadcasting to the nation and the world by live stream on the Internet. Carl is not ashamed of the Word of God, the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. He does not care about political correctness, nor does he depend upon a teleprompter or popularity polls. Carl stands for truth, reason, and common sense. Carl firmly believes that America is God's gift to the world. If any of that interests you, you are at the right place. Freedom Friday on 1330 WEBY. Now, here's Carl Gallops. All right, welcome back, Gulf Coast, and welcome back, America. And, of course, we're broadcasting live this afternoon, 1330 WEBY. So glad that you've joined in. If you want to be a part of the show, if you have questions to ask, comments to make, or opinions to share, 850-623-1330, 850-623-1330. In the studio with me today is Brandon Big B. Brandon Big B. And, of course, Mallory Bardwell, your world-famous producer. When you call up, you get to talk to her, and uh, then she'll put you in the queue, and you can get on the air. We've got callers on the line. I'm going to go to those callers. And, Brandon, and I are going to be continuing this discussion this afternoon is open line Friday Brandon Big B and I are going to be talking about things that are in the news and whatever comes to our mind and whatever is in our interest and in the meantime you can just jump in and be a part of it you can talk about what we're talking about or if you want to bring something new and different to the uh, table you can do that as well uh, and and we look forward to uh, speaking with you but before we continue on Brandon I got to ask you, you ever been to the deli at the local yoga I've heard of it. <laughs> You've heard of it. <laughs> I own a little stock. And you've it. eaten a few meals there. You own a little stock in it, don't you? Yes. I, I tell you, for our local listeners, those along the Gulf Coast, you, you know about the local yokel already. They're at the corner of U.S. Highway 90 East and Ward Basin Road. U.S. Highway 90 East, of course, being a major corridor all across the southeastern United States. It comes right through northwest Florida, intersects with Ward Basin Road in northwest Florida, and there at that intersection is a business called The Local Yokel. It's run by Claude and Melanie Duvall. Claude and his family have been in this area for 50 years. And uh, The Local Yokel, it is a landmark, and people around here love it. It's a convenience store, a gas station, a deli, a car wash, all four businesses wrapped up into one big section of, of, of an entire uh, intersection there. 5,000 individual items in the convenience store, gas station, you get 100% ethanol, free gasoline, the car wash, touchless state-of-the-art technology, the only place I get my car wash when I'm in North West Florida, and the deli, the deli, the deli, my goodness, from fresh fried and baked chicken, fresh vegetables, hand-breaded chicken, and, and uh, you know, down here in the South, we like the gizzards and livers, and they got all that you can take in, you can dine in, or you can take it out, uh, biscuits and the, for breakfast, if, everything you can think of, I mean, it is, it's, you know, pizza, I don't know, just anything you can think of, they've got it there, and they've got a nice little section there, a dining area there, where you can sit down, and people do, all day long, people are in there eating, it's, it's amazing, so check Check out the folks at the local yokel and tell them that you heard about it on Freedom Friday. They're huge supporters of WEBY as well as Freedom Friday. My mouth is watering. I can hardly speak thinking Ooh, about it. Mm. Stop talking about it, bro. I, you know, and you know, and I've said this before. I don't like white meat on chicken. And, 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 and my wife, one day I, I came home. I forgot it was church or someplace. She had stopped by the local yokel, brought a chicken box, and, and she opened it up, and I just reached in and grabbed a piece of chicken and started eating it. It was the most succulent piece of chicken I think I've ever had. And I looked at it. I asked her, I said, where did you get this? She said, this is local yokel. And I said, isn't this chicken breast, this piece that I'm eating? She said, it sure is. She smiled. And, and she said, it sure is. I said, I've never had a chicken breast that tastes like this. She said, well, 
it tastes like that every time you get it from the local yokel. That's not a mistake. So I eat, I even eat white meat at the local yokel. Is it bad that as good as that sounds, I just want a box of livers and gizzards right now? <laughs> I, I know. I love the, liz- the lizards and gizzards. <laughs> I love them. Oh my gosh. Let's go on. We've got folks on the on the line, and we're so glad that you've uh, that you've held on. James, uh, thank you so much for listening to Freedom Friday, and I know your mouth's probably watering too. But uh, listen, uh, what 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 you want to say, my man? Thank you. You got me confused with that food. I was thinking about that. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, in the uh, sixth chapter, get right to it, in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation, it speaks of the four horses of the apocalypse. Yeah. Now, I grew up Catholic, and so the four horsemen of the apocalypse involved Notre Dame football. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny, James. <laughs> it, it wasn't until recently when I started to go to uh, church down here um, that I been thinking about the last uh, part of that, the last horse it speaks uh, of a pale horse that mm-hmm. bring, kills many people. It speaks of the actual number. It gives you an actual number of how many will die. Mm-hmm. So that can't be disputed in the future when that happens. And uh, it, it speaks of three things that will kill these people, which is hunger, starvation, and I mean, starvation and uh, the sword, and beast of the earth Mm -hmm. and i've always wondered especially in recent years when animals seem to be changing in strange ways just even around here where i live uh now i was wondering about how you felt about that do you think it's possible that these animals will actually be possessed by the devil and actually organize themselves in some sort of an animal animal farm kind of thing yeah where they would attack, you know, the civilian population. Well, James, listen, first of all, thank you for listening today, and thank you for asking that excellent question. People have a myriad of questions about Revelation, and I've done a lot of teaching and preaching on it. In fact, my latest book, the one that, that I have, that I'm writing now, uh, and hope to have out this year, is about uh, the book of Revelation. Now, it's like no other book you've ever read on the book of Revelation, and it's it's about the trumpet warnings of Revelation. Are we really living in the trumpet day? That's not the title of the book, but that's kind of the theme of it. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to share that with you. But James, you were talking about Revelation 6, verse 7 is what you're referring to. And it says this, When the Lamb, and of course we know that's Jesus, opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death. And Hades was following close behind him. And that's the key. In other words, it's, it's, it's in this period right before the return of the Lord and the pouring out of God's wrath when, when, when death is going to come to the earth like never before. And, and hell is fall right behind it. In other words, there are satanic and demonic forces that are at work on the face of the earth now. And it says they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword. Of course, that would be war. Famine, and that often follows war, yeah. and plague, which often follows devastating wars. And, of course, a lot of folks think that we may be on the verge of World War III anyway. And by the wild beasts of the earth to kill by them. Okay? So, yes, you're right, James. There seems to be an implication that there will be a, a demonic presence or power even over the wild beasts. However, more practically speaking, think about it. What if? I mean, we're all the time reading headline news about animals escaping from zoos and exotic animals and people keeping tigers and alligators and lions as pets and they escape and they hurt people or maul people or, you know. But think about all the animals just in the United States in zoos and think about the uh, the wild animals, bears coming into people's yards and you can't do anything about it and, you know, they put you in jail if you mess with them. And, and, and what if? You had a worst case scenario, and I'm, you know, I, I mean, a biblical scenario of a World War III, and like Brandon said, a 1929, and government seizing people's money, closing things down, rush on stores, uh, you know, all heck breaks loose. And, and, and what if there are catastrophes that, that wind up uh, opening up zoos and stuff? And, and once again, America's filled with lions and apes and, and bears and, and tigers and, you know, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Uh, but, but so, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a horrifying scenario, but Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 seems to speak of those kinds of days. Yeah. Now, I, I you know, so anyway, Brandon, go ahead. Well, 
you know, I've often thought about this, and you and I have had this conversation uh, many times, but, you know, I think a lot of times when, when we get into Revelation and there's so much imagery um, that a lot of things we just envision either the mm -hmm. hand of God coming down mm -hmm. and doing this or the hand of Satan coming down and doing this. But think about but this. Sometimes. Re read the globalist agenda and right. think of this. One of the famous quotes, I think, from, the, from one of the Rockefellers was, uh, and this is going to be a little off, but it's going to be close. He talks about if you can control, uh, if you can control the oil, you can control countries. Right. But if you can control food, Right. You can control, control the world. Individuals. Yes. Yeah. So understand that there's an agenda out there right now to control us through food. I mean, look at all the stuff with the GMOs. Right. Now, think about this. The wild beasts and all that going crazy. L look at all the genetic experiments mm -hmm. that are going on in the world right now. They're mm -hmm. messing with the gene pool. Oh, I know. I know. And, and the, you, these so-called scientists are messing with things that were ordained and put in order that were not meant to be messed with right. and not meant to be mutated. And so, you know, some of these sci-fi movies, um, well, one that I've talked to you about before, uh, uh, Will Smith, my goodness, the, the movie just left me, but he's trapped in New York, the last person there, oh, after yeah. the, um, the, yeah. uh, the vaccines caused people to mutate and right. the animals and all. Now, that's kind of far-fetched in sci-fi, but just think about what they're doing with science right. and the mutations. Right. We could see something like that. So right. all of that could be done by people, right? by us. Right. And, and, and You know, and, right and, here, we right. have the technologies to do all of that, to control 100% of the world. Listen, Monsanto right now controls, I think it's some 60 or 70% of the world's food supply yeah. today. I, I read that several uh, several months ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was That's just one a, a, a matter of fact article. And all of their food is genetically modified. Mm-hmm. And you wonder why people, we have a problem with obesity and with these cancers and diseases and tumors. Well, we're putting chemicals. And hormone problems. Yeah. Well, hey, and that's all a part of it. Do some research. That's all a part of it. The feminization of men. Right. And the hyper-feminization of women. Right. They're doing it. It's soft kill. Right. It's a military term. It's soft kill. And they're doing it to us chemically. And it's it's part of an evil agenda right. that unfortunately born, yes comes right out of the born seat of Satan <laughs> in the pits of hell. Ephesians chapter six, but our it's battles being not accomplished against flesh and through blood. men. Right, and so what you're saying is brilliant, and I often point this out. You're right, and you and I talk about this, and in my preaching and teaching. So when you read these scriptures, don't just say, "Well, this is." I mean, like, uh, what was the what was the, the Left Behind series? Yeah. Where all of a sudden, you know, the, gate, the, the, the pits of hell are open and these demons come out and they start manipulating things. Not necessarily. That's right. It's, you know, it may be born in the pits of hell, but it may be being operated by mankind himself. That's right. And then coming to fulfillment. The other thing is, when we read this imagery in the scriptures, we've got to be very careful that we don't take it too literally until that unfolds. Then we can see... How, hindsight. Hindsight. Right. With hindsight, then we've got the scriptures in front of us. Then we can see the fulfillment of that prophecy. Right. Otherwise, you can get into some really freaky interpretations. Yeah. Because there's certain things that, that there's no de debating. When you talk right. about you know the, the League of Nations that is going to come against Israel, I mean, I mean they're listed by name. So, right. you know, I mean, that kind of stuff, when you see that happen, guess what? Right, uh, you right, know, right, I mean, right. Trumpet 6 is blowing, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Now, please don't hear me wrong. I did not say not to take the Bible literally. I right. did not say that. What I'm saying are these symbols. Symbolic, uh, a lot of things in, in Revelation are symbols pointing to a greater reality, but we don't know what that greater reality is until it unfolds. Yeah. Then we have the scriptures there to compare it to and say, aha, this is that. That's why I'm saying before it's unfolded, don't be too literal in demanding that you know what it means. And, That's the point. And one other thing I would say along those lines, and, and I've learned this, um, and I think it's just wise. Everybody wants to run right to Revelation or Daniel to right. interpret what's going to happen right. in the end. Right. Let me encourage people with this. Get a firm grasp on Matthew 24. Yes. Read what who said about the end times. Right, Jesus. What Jesus said His about it. His disciples asked him. Because not only did he tell them what was going to happen, but I believe if I understand right, and a lot of other people, he told them in order. Right. He, he gave a chronological timeline he of really what did. was going to happen. Yeah, he did. So... Get a grasp on that instead of running straight to Revelation. Right. You're absolutely right. Folks, we've got to take a time out. When we come back, we're going straight to the phone lines. Harold, you're up next. Folks behind him, hang on. If you want to be a part of it and get in the queue, 623-1330, area code 850. You're listening to Freedom Friday. It's Open Line Friday. Brandon Big B is in here with me. Mallory Bardwell, your world-famous producer. We'll be right back.
Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. How can one man bother so many people by simply telling the truth? Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. Well, folks, we do want to welcome you back to Freedom Friday. Thank you for being with us. I, however, am not Carl Gallops. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Maybe the next best thing. I yeah, don't know. I appreciate but, you bringing us uh, back. I am Brandon Gallops, and right now uh, just kind of taking over the host seat, and I appreciate that opportunity. But I appreciate all the callers so far uh, today and uh, the insight that they brought and for you guys putting up with us and letting us put our uh, yeah. tinfoil hat uh, yeah. opinions yeah. out yeah. there on you today. So. <laughs> Well, we actually have a caller on the line that we're going to bring on right now, Harold. So, uh, Harold, are you there? I'm here. Mr. Harold, this is Brandon. I understand that you have a question uh, for Carl about his books. Well, I um, first of all, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, thanks, sir. And, and I want uh, your uh, audience out there to know that um, um, you and Carl had no idea that I was going to call. Uh, and when I got through on the phone from Mallory, you had the advertisement on there from um, uh, the chicken. The local chicken yoga. Yeah, yeah the local yoga. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it brought me back the time when Nellie and I were there when we had a great meal. Yeah. At that chicken chicken place. Yeah, okay. Uh, are you, Her- uh, are you Harold from Canada? Is this our Canadian friend, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well... You know, I thought I would call because you're not going to have Mike Shoesmith on there. You're not going to have Dr. Grace. Not today. So, not today. They'll be back next week. Token Canadian. We've got to, man. Thank you. Thank you, you for listening. So. Today is uh, Canadian Discrimination <laughs> right. Day, Harold. Thanks, so thanks for listening. Call, just, I mean, I'm not going to. There's no way that I can replace those two. There's yeah. just, just no way. Well, I, I love you, Harold, but I'm going to agree with you. All right. <laughs> well, listen, anyway, what you got on your mind, what I, man? What I wanted to say was. Um, uh, I have just finished uh, the uh, Kuduri book, yeah, and it's amazing. Thank and, you. And I suggest that everybody that that's in, in your voice in in the that can hear me or hear you, they go buy the book. Well, thank because you. Because the book is amazing. Uh, I'm into the other one now, and Nellie's already read it, <laughs> and uh, she was really amazed with it. She says, "I'm going to." I'm not going to go back to it right away, but I want to go back to the book again and read it Thank because you. there's so much information in there. You can't just all, you can't absorb it all at once. Well, you're so kind, Harold. And by the mm-hmm. other one, you mean the magic man in the sky effectively yes. defending the Christian faith? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Have you have you seen the Kaduri movie yet? No, I haven't. Oh, you guys have to get that. And no, you're going to want to show that to people. Yeah. Yeah, we have it. Um, as a matter of fact, I think we've got two copies, one for ourselves and one for the pastor. Yeah, good deal. I believe, yeah. Well, when you're so, pastor... Uh, I just wanted to call in and say super-duper books. I, I didn't want to break in and, and, and break away and split up the, what you were talking about with Thanks. all that stuff. But I just had Thanks, to Harold. call and say uh, uh, I loved reading the book, and I loved the stories that you just told uh, earlier on the program about um, okay. the books and the movies getting to Israel. Thank I think you. That's amazing. Too. It, it is. It's it, it's an absolutely amazing story. I think WND is going to write a story on it here in the next day or two. They they're blown away by it as well. Great. So uh, well, thank you for your kind words, Harold, and anyway, thanks for listening. I just thought I would say that. Okay. And hi, Brandon, and hi, uh, Pastor <laughs> Carl, and um, hopefully talk to you again sometime. Okay. Thank you, Harold. We appreciate you, it. Y'all be careful give, in your travels. Yeah. Give Nelly our regards as well. Absolutely. Well, go ahead and bring. Uh, I, th- I think we've got Clarence we, up next. We do have Blake another Clarence caller on. on. Uh, we're going to bring on. Clarence, Clarence, are you with us, brother? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I enjoy y'all, man. Uh, Brandon, you. you're pretty good. <laughs> he is. In, he is. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Clarence. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I want to say something. See if I'm reading anything in the uh, uh, Revelation. Okay, George you got, you're going to have to make it quick because we're almost I'm against the break. Okay. I'm going to make it quick. George Bush, the money Bush, Obama's abomination. Obama's the, lo- the longest president that I know, and one of his pet peeves, it's global warming that the ice was melting, and now you can't get the snow to stop coming and melt. And uh, everything is backfiring. Obama killed it. It'll be, some, it'll be named after him. Yeah, a lot, a, a lot of a lot of stuff is piling up against Obama right now, Clarence. Right. No doubt about it. And you know what? I have found this so interesting. You look at the number of 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 just secular news articles right. that that 
and I don't think they even know what they're doing. I know where you're going, but because Clarence go said to the word Obamacare, right. they call it the abomination, Nation. and it's yeah. a play on words, the abomination. But it, I mean, how funny is that? That the Bible tells us we're going to know the Antichrist by the abomination that causes desolation. Right. You see this play on words, and I'm not saying that Obama is the Antichrist, right. but it's just astounding well, that we see this word. That's been created and let, in the last few years. And let, you're the right. abomination. That's right. And let me tell you another word. And Clarence just said it. He said lawless. this lawless one. Yes. Rush Limbaugh for the last two weeks has gone off on Obama, calling him the lawless one. And other, I've seen other headlines of secular sources talking about the lawless nature. And even they don't know. Now Limbaugh may know because right. he claims to be a Christian. But they're using terms that describe the Antichrist in Second Thessalonians. Biblical terms. He will be known as the lawless one. He will tro throw truth to the ground. Yes. He will, uh, basically, I'm going to paraphrase now, basically just do what he wishes. He, and Daniel says that. Mm -hmm. and, and then he will destroy the law, and people will uphold him as some kind of a, uh, you know, a Messiah type, if you will. And, and But he's called the lawless one. Yeah. And the last two or three weeks, Weeks, just go through news on the internet and see how many articles talk about Obama as being the lawless one. Yeah, yeah, I, no I, I, I'm I, It's amazing. It, and thanks, it, Clarence. Thank you so much. It has been unbelievable to see that. And like I say, the uh, the the abomination one has just absolutely blown me away. I've seen yeah. that time and time again the last several months. Real quick before we hit this break, I yes. wanted to bring this up because yes. the previous caller about Revelation 6 yes. and, and the yes. Four Horses of the Apocalypse, yes. Mike Shoesmith did a, a video teaching and I think an article on this on PP Simmons a while back. He did. Right now, today, today, basically one quarter of the population of the planet, so roughly 7 billion people, right. that's 1.34, right? 1.34 right. right? yeah. billion? Well, Almost 2 billion people. Are Muslim. Muslim. Islam. 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 A lot of people speculate that Islam is the fourth horse of the apocalypse. Yeah, and and also the Bible speaks of, uh, well, yeah, we're out of time, but you're you're absolutely right. We've, we've got to take a time out. Man, this, where does time go? Well, it's running away, folks. Take we us to the break. We appreciate you being with us today. Freedom Friday. We'll be back after the break. And we're going to talk about uh, the Ohio National yes. Guard training to fight you and me. That's right. And, 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 and they're specifically targeting people who happen to think the Second Amendment is a good thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we're going to pile that in with some other interesting headlines from this last week. We appreciate you folks being with us today on another edition of Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. That's right, folks. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Welcome back to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, 1330 WEBY. Carl speaks with ontological certitude and theological indubitableness. For you liberals out there, this means that Carl knows who he is and that he is unashamed to be on a first name basis with God. Now, here's Carl Gallops. Folks, welcome back again to Freedom Friday, and unfortunately, this is not Carl Gallops. Bradley Jensen fooled y'all. This is Brandon Gallops. <laughs> well, that's not unfortunate necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can tell, I certainly do have Carl Gallops in the studio with me. And actually, uh, we need to give a shout out to another wonderful sponsor of Freedom Friday. So I'm going to let you take that over. Yeah, we do. And, and what we're going to do in the next few moments, folks, we're going to talk about the Ohio National Guard and their training exercises uh, using folks like us as um, uh, uh, the targets, the, t the, the homegrown terrorists, people that like the Second Amendment, etc. So if you want to call in if you know anything about that or you have questions about it and you want to call in and be a part of the show 623-1330 area code 850 but Brandon's right uh, because uh, one of our tremendous uh, sponsors of this program is Patterson's Heat Patterson Heating and Air Conditioning right here in Northwest Florida and I'm telling you long before they ever started advertising on WEBY I was using Patterson Heating and Air Conditioning exclusively I still do and of course most of my listeners know that I am the pastor the senior pastor of a 
church right here on the Gulf Coast, Hickory Hammock Baptist Church on Hickory Hammock Road in northwest Florida, and we've been using Patterson Heating and Air for years. And I'm going to tell you about Tom Patterson. He is as honest as the day is long. He will only fix what needs to be fixed, and he'll tell you. I, I, there, there are multiple accounts anecdotal instances of when people will call, uh, you know, uh, something's wrong with their heating, something's wrong with their air conditioning, they call to have somebody come out and look at it, and then they're, while they're getting quotes, they'll call Tom Patterson, and Tom will come along behind them and say, no, you don't need a whole new air conditioning unit, or you don't need a compressor, or you don't need all these hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars worth of work. Here's all you need, and he'll replace a part, or he'll do it, you know, for, for so much less. Now, if it can be done for less. Now, now some Sometimes, of course, it's exactly what the other people said, and Tom will give you the very best deal, and he backs up his work. He's honest. He is trustworthy. His work is awesome. He's the only person I use at the church and in my own home. And I'm going to tell you something else you've got to get if you don't have it. They will install what's called a fresh air blue tube ultraviolet lamp. Because here's the deal. You've got a filter in your heating and air conditioning unit, and that's important. You've got to keep that thing changed a lot because it gets dirty quick. But it's designed, of course, to trap dust and microscopic bacteria and viruses and mold and all that, but those sometimes uh, pass right on through and they get blown back into your house and into your lungs. You know, you lay in there in bed at night breathing all that junk, bacteria and viruses and mold, but Patterson Heating and Air, they will install a uh, fresh air blue tube ultraviolet lamp and it kills those harmful pathogens, including the flu virus, so that you and your family can breathe clean, healthy air. We put one in our house years ago. It has dramatically, dramatically changed our health. It is absolutely amazing. You need to call Patterson's Heating, Patterson Heating and Air Conditioning. Call them today. They service Northwest Florida, so you can call them uh, a huge chunk of our listening area at 626-7124, 626-7124. I'll say it again, 626 7124 Patterson Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, Brandon, tell us about the Ohio uh, National Guard. I mean, you, you just tell that story and we'll talk about it. Folks, if you want to call in and be a part of the show, 623-1330. Yeah, this story caught my eye a couple of days ago. And uh, as you know, I immediately emailed you and said, um, we need to talk about this Friday. Yeah. Uh, and I apologize in, in advance if I curse on air or tear the studio <laughs> up or uh, punch the computer screen. It, it, it'll make you want to do all that. It, it, it's just, you know, it's so surreal, some of the stuff that we have to talk about. I know. Because if we didn't talk about it, you're not going to get it very many other places. You it, can count on one yeah. hand. And this is the kind of stuff that people need to know. Because, again, when you look back in history, it's these kinds of things that were covered up and suppressed by governments like Nazi Germany, like the Soviet yes. Union, yes. Uh, like the corrupt regimes of Iran and Iraq. Right. These kind of things are covered up and suppressed, and people like you and I are called tinfoil hats or conspiracy theorists. And then... When it comes out that all this has been going on, it's too late. That's right. And this is why so many other people won't talk about what we're getting ready to talk about because they've been terrified into talking about it because they care deeply about what people think about them. That's right. You and I are crazy enough. We don't care what people think about us. If we see something that appears to be the truth or we know is the truth or appears to be the truth and we need to investigate it, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. So you're going to hear it here on, on Freedom Friday. Now, now, if we find out later there's nothing to the story or it needs to be tweaked or different facts, Facts come in, you'll hear that here as well. But because we care and, uh, uh, about the truth and we don't care what people think about us, we're going to bring these facts to you. So, Brandon, go yeah. ahead. Tell well, us what you got. Earlier this week, uh, media trackers uh, released some story. They have obtained uh, some documents from the Ohio National Guard right. um, that basically in January of last year, that would be 2013 at this point, right. the Ohio National Guard uh, did a complete training exercise. Um, and the basis of the training exercise was this. The scenario involved a plot from local school district employees to use biological weapons in order to advance their beliefs about protecting gun rights and Second Amendment rights. So the terrorists were people who used bombs against American citizens in order to protect Second Amendment rights. They were presented as the terrorists. The terrorists are people who love the Constitution is right. the way I interpret that. Right. 
Right. Yes. And who agree with our founding fathers. Now, Let's just add this to the list of that P.P. Simmons article of the things that we have been right about. Because for the last couple of years, even before I started coming on the radio with you, I was writing about this right. for P.P. Simmons. Yes, you were. And, and I was giving links to the Army manuals, army.mil. Just just search into that. Army.mil, uh, training to fight uh, Second Amendment uh, uh, rights people, training to fight people that believe in end times. Right. It's an army manual. <laughs> I know. I, I remember when you were reporting on that. And our yeah. our, our military. Now, uh, again, I'm not sitting here beating up our ground level troops because right. they're just doing what they're told. Unfortunately, they're doing their job. They're doing their job. And I believe that most of these people signed up with the intention of defending this country with their lives, if necessary. Right. But the the, the corrupt uh, uh, factions of our government, Regimes. the criminal elements yeah. that have taken over uh, parts of our government, are twisting this up. And are literally training our military to fight you and I. Right. And, and here's the thing. If you're sitting out there and you're not a gun guy, you're not a Second Amendment guy, well, I don't think people need to have guns on the street anyway. But what do you believe in? Right. Because the thing is this. To you and I, our gun rights may be important. To you, it may be something totally different. It may be your freedom of speech. Right. Uh, you, you know, what, whatever it is, it may be right. the ability to go and have whatever job you want to have instead of whatever the government tells you you have to work. Right. You know, there's a million different examples we could use, but whatever it is you believe in, they can take it away from you. That's right. And if we don't stand up together as a country right now, as people, as individuals, as citizens, as sovereign citizens of, I hope, the last great free nation on earth, right. then it will be gone very right. soon. Right. And I want to read this quote because it's kind of a famous quote. Um, and, you know, I heard this several years ago, and it just hit home. It's from Martin Niemöller was the gentleman's name. He was a priest in Nazi Germany. Right. And this is probably ring some bells with some people if you're a student of history. But here's what he said. He I, said I, I know this. This is awesome. He said, then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. For me, right. So if we put that in today's terms, what does it say? Well, they came for the guys that love their guns and their religion, you know, the bitter clingers. Right. But I didn't speak out because I wasn't a bitter clinger. Right. They and came for the guys who wanted to have the ability to speak up against their government whenever right. they didn't uh, think, whenever they thought they were corrupt. Right. But I didn't say anything because I didn't really care what my government yeah. was doing. Right. And I thought they had tinfoil hats and I didn't want to, yeah. So I didn't but speak But then out. they came for, for me. For me. And the guys with the guns yeah. and the guys that were willing to speak up They're gone. were already gone. That's right. And nobody could protect me. So I think the point of this is, again, this is not fear-mongering. This is reporting the facts. Right. The Ohio National Guard held a three-day training to fight me and you. Right. Because we are viewed as and, the terrorists. And said it in writing, and in their manual. And listen, here, even more interesting, the same article points out that the previous year, in 2012, right. they ran the same type of drill to fight left-wing activists. Right. The day after they ran it, they came out and publicly apologized due to backlash. Yep. They have yet to issue an apology one year and two months later right. since they trained to fight you and I. Right. Because we are the enemy. Right. And, and it's a shame, you know, it sounds almost un-American to say that, sitting here talking, but when you just look at what's going on in the world, when you boil it down, when you turn off Fox and CNN and MSNBC, right. and you get into the facts Where of what are going on, pablum. when you're being fed the government talking points, right. that's right, and you dig into the facts of what's going on in this world, um, we are living in some interesting times. Uh, Some prophetic But times. I just, <laughs> y you know, if I could tell people one thing, make a difference somehow. It's a different world, you know. Use the internet. Use Facebook. Um, you know, look, look at the uh, when we called out for information for PP Simmons. Look at the flood of information that we got, and we were able to open up a whole nother element to right. this Obama fraud right. birth certificate uh, and beyond, case. and beyond, and beyond. Yeah. and beyond. So, just use use the information, use the technologies that we have. Right. Make a difference. Figure out a way to make a difference from where you are. Right. Absolutely. And make a difference for the kingdom work, folks, as well. Make a difference for your country and make a difference for the kingdom of God because these are biblical, prophetic times in which we live. You can see the Bible unfolding right before us. Yes, absolutely. When we get back from break, we got a couple of callers we on do. the line. We do. Folks, we appreciate you being with us today. 
Hang on, we got a few minutes left. We're going to give you some more. We'll be right back with Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. Well, you are back with Freedom Friday, and I am Brandon Gallops, and of course, uh, in the studio with me uh, is Carl Gallops, and we actually have a couple of callers on the line that were patient enough to hold through that last segment, so right now, we are going to go to Tim. Tim, you are on the air with Freedom Friday. Uh, you have a question about the uh, Arpaio investigation? Yeah, a question and a quick statement, if that's okay, Brandon. I just wanted to kind of jump on what you just said, and to anybody that's listening, if anybody thinks that we're going to... I guess change what's going on around by just changing, changing the chairs and, and, and putting new people in there. I think they're wrong. That's why I'm really hopeful yeah. that something seriously large is going to come out of this whole Arpaio thing or this Operation Spring thing that's supposed to be happening here in May. Because I think if something monumental like that doesn't happen, um, I, I don't. I'm, I'm fearful of, of what what what's going to go on. To, the problem within our government is systemic. It's right. cancer, and it needs to be taken out. Yeah, there are, we need to sh- yeah. And Tim, there, yeah, you're, you're, there, you're, there, I'm sorry. We're both going, we both want to talk <laughs> to you. Jump on that one. Say, there's, there's millions of people that agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. You're yeah. preaching to the choir on that yeah. one, Tim. Brother, I, yep. I, and if more people need to understand, and I've screamed this over these radio waves uh, and in other forums, the whole left-right paradigm that is so fake and is so set up to keep us in fighting amongst amongst ourselves about who has an r beside their name and who has a d (laughs) beside their name they're all stealing out of the same pot they're all driving this country into the ground yeah we're running out of time tim what what real quick real quick okay here it is so the question is mike zulu was on this program last week and and mentioned that there were now two detectives who were working on the other part of the investigation not relating to the birth certificate. Yeah. And I saw on the birth report now where Joe Arpaio has contradicted that and said that that was not true. And I hadn't heard anything beyond that. So he, it sounds like he threw Zulu under the bus. So I'm trying to verify yeah. is okay. that accurate. No, okay. you're in contact with Zulu. Where, yeah. where is that? Okay. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, Tim. it. Well, Tim, I don't know what you read or where you read it or who supposedly was the authority. Do you know something well, about it, Brandon? One thing that Tim may not be aware of, uh, Bertha Report was taken over this last week. Yeah, it was, it was hacked. hacked. It was so hacked. what you could have seen, Tim, and, and I don't know this, but very well what you could have seen was a disinformation campaign. Yeah, and, and all I can tell you, Tim, and again, please hear me, I am not, I have never claimed to be an official spokesperson for Arpaio or Zulo. And so if what I'm getting ready to say, if we find out later that I'm wrong, I will correct it. But here's what I know from talking to Mike Zulo. There are several investigators who have been assigned to this criminal investigation under Sheriff Joe Arpaio. They work for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff's Office funds are being used because it is absolutely within their jurisdiction what they are investigating. All right. Now, this is not the birth certificate investigation. That's a completely different matter, and that is being held, being uh, investigated by the cold case posse, and they are under Arpaio. Lieutenant Zulo is the commander of that unit, answers directly and only to Sheriff Arpaio, and the funds being used for that come from strictly donations, volunteer funds. But what he said on the air here, he said that on the air here, that there are several investigators assigned to that, and that is true from everything and the latest information I've gotten. Now, Joe Arpaio is the sheriff, and if he says no, and if he pulls investigators off or shuts it down or what that's his prerogative but to my knowledge and i was on the phone with mike zulu today that has not been done the investigation is going full bore in fact i even know the names of the investigators so i know that there are investigators assigned to it so i don't know really know what you read or who wrote it or where it came from but that's my best answer right now again i'm not the sheriff's office spokesperson so if i find out later i spoke out of turn i will make it right but that's the best information i have as 
up this afternoon, right. Tim. I hope that helped you. And again, just important for people to remember, Bertha Report was hacked That's last was week, hacked. and there was some disinformation put out through that site, which right. typically is a very credible site. That's right. So That's right. want to go that. Uh, let's see. Steve, what you got for us, brother? Brandon, I'm very encouraged listening to a young man like you put out solid truth. I'm a Vietnam Gulf War veteran. I would like you to look at a video on YouTube. Uh, I've got the master, and it's... Uh, very intriguing and thought compelling. Please watch it. It's called the New Pearl Harbor. Could you watch that for me? The, the, the new Her, the new Pearl Harbor. Yes, I will one, certainly check that out. Part one, part two, and part three. And may I have your uh, email? No, uh, not off, over the air. Off the air. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give it to me off the air. Yeah. Yes, we, we'll we'll allow Mallory to do that, yeah. Steve. And uh, and we appreciate uh, appreciate the information. I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, be able to find some good stuff to report on That's, out of that. Thanks for listening, Steve. Harbor. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. I appreciate it. God bless you, Steve. Appreciate it. All right. Well, and I think the phone lines are still ringing, and Mallory will take care of that with Steve. But uh, but anyway, listen, you, you, you sh shared a factoid with me, and this is a sad factoid, but you, you tell us about how many Americans have been killed by cops. You know, th this was unbelievable to me, and this sounds like beat up on the police day, but it's not. No, it's not, but, but because this, I used to be a police. Yeah, no, no, not at all, but, but the militarization of our police. Right. Right. Since 9-11, since, since September the 11th, 2001, over 5,000 Americans have been killed by local police and sheriff's officers, okay? Now, during that same time, 3,000 Americans have been killed in Iraq, right. okay, right. Uh, by insurgents, and around 2,000 in Afghanistan. So understand that between Iraq and Afghanistan combined, you have basically the same number of, of American citizens that have been killed with inside our borders by our own police on our streets. Right. And, now, of course, many of those are justified. But, but some, <laughs> some of those are justified. Right. That's exactly right. But there are many Miriam Carries out there right. who were flat out murdered, and I would go so far as to say executed. Right. And, and that's our opinion, folks, and we're entitled to give our opinion. But based upon the facts, in fact, WND just two days ago ran a huge headline article on that very thing. Her sister is suing right now because she thinks she was murdered as well. Let's Absolutely. go back to the phone Yeah, lines. let's go back to the phone lines real quick. Wayne, we've got you on, brother. you got a question about Obamacare, and you're going to have to make it quick we are fast running out of time go ahead it's quick it's quick a new wrinkle in the obamacare i just heard today y'all need to check it is that what we didn't know about it is they are putting in 70 stations throughout this country the first one has been open to detroit where if you're black you get your gas free <laughs> and it's to help the corporate. I swear, I swear to God. Where, where, where did you hear that? Where did you hear that, Wayne? Or where'd well, you read you that? You know, the email never is uh, wrong, but uh, <laughs> I got it in an email from somebody that uh, said that they had checked it on Snoop. You might want to check that. It said that they opened their first station in Detroit, and they asked, oh, I'm not sure which one of the people it is in the higher-up with Obama's uh, uh, entourage, and they said that they would not be checking because they can't check every black to make sure that they have needs. So in these 70 stations that they're putting across the country, if you're black, you get your gas free. But you know what, Wayne? Yeah, yeah. Wayne, we appreciate you bringing yeah. that up. We'll do some checking into yeah. that. I was going to say that would be easy to Again, that's the first time hearing of it, but Me we too. will definitely give you our word. We'll do some checking into it. If it's the truth, I can promise you we'll talk about that's it right, right here. That's right. <laughs> Well, listen, we've only got one minute left, and I, 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 let me just say this, folks. If you haven't got the book or the movie yet, go to Amazon, and you can get it anywhere, but the quickest place tonight, go to Amazon and, and get the book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. You can get a beautiful hardback edition and a beautiful dust jacket. It's now in its second printing. Been some tweaking, some additions. You want that second edition. Even if you have the first edition, you may want it and then give the other one away. Uh, both of them are accurate, by the way. It's just done a little tweaking. And then the movie. There's a movie by the same title. And also you can get it in Kindle. You can get it in ebook. You can get it in Nook. You can get it anywhere good books are sold. If you go to a bookstore and they don't have it or can't get it, don't do business with them. <laughs> because they should have access to this book in any good bookstore. Uh, but you've got to get that book. If you've been listening to the show today, you know the phenomena that's sweeping the world with that book and now inside of Israel. 
Anyway, Brandon, you got something you want to wrap it up with? Are you are you going to keep an eye on this D.C. thing? Because that is not over with you. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. Go to ppsimmons.blogspot.com. Check out an article by Reverend Joda Collins this week about Obama and the uh, 22nd Amendment. I think it will be very eye-opening. Check it out. Yeah, you will you enjoy see it. That. And we missed, of course, Mike Shoesmith and Dr. Grayson. They'll be back on next week. But Brandon Gallops and I certainly enjoyed being with you today. It was so good to, uh, to have you with us today in the studio. And remember, you can download all these podcasts or the sections of this podcast tomorrow at carlgallops.com. You can get the whole thing or just little pieces of it, whichever one you want. Appreciate you folks listening in with us today. We cannot wait until next Friday to be back with you again. As always, please, folks, make a difference. Make a difference where you can. Question everything. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. God bless America.